Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be connecting with you today on this live stream. And I'm just doing some last minute adjustments here as you can see me doing. And today is the 16th of May. It is 2017. And today's live stream is on the layers of enlightenment, understanding from the perspectives of what I've learned, what is enlightenment, and that there are layers to it. Uh, and that if there's, of course, even when you reach enlightenment, even higher layers. And so I'll share with you some insights that have been taught uh, to the students of Master Shah based on his understandings and wisdoms. I'll even share with you some of the unique uh, ways in which enlightenment can be attained. It has been said that there are 84,000 ways that one can reach enlightenment. And so you never uh, are limited to one perspective or one way in which something like that can happen. But there's always an opportunity to uh, reach further in our soul journey. So until we are literally the original creator, then there's always room to grow. So thank you all for tuning into today. I hope you enjoyed yesterday. For those that are watching this for the very first time, listening for the very first time, yesterday on the 15th was a day of celebration. <clears throat> and um, it w marked one year of doing these Facebook live streams. And there was tremendous uh, blessings offered. One of the things that I give credit to my, give all the credit to my teacher, but one of the things that I've seen my teacher do is when he uh, receives an upliftment, he instantly gives blessings to all those around him. When he has a, uh, a special event occur where we should be celebrating for him, what I've seen him do again and again and again is he blesses all of those that he is trying to teach. And just as a good parent teaches their children through actions, uh, it's a it's a um, different animal entirely when you uh, are on the other side. And what happens is you start to recognize that you adopt the patterns of those who you, who you honor, who you emulate. So I'm very grateful that Master Shah taught that even though he was uplifted, even though he was blessed, he blessed others. What a great teacher. So I was honored to offer those blessings yesterday to everybody. If you missed that, you must, should go back. I offered, uh, just I can tell you they're beyond huge blessings, so don't miss it. So, um, and you can find that by going above my video, there's a listing there uh, for the archive videos, or you can just simply go to my Facebook page and scroll back down a little bit and you'll be able to locate them. Yesterday, towards the end of the uh, live stream, <coughs> I offered uh, a complimentary blessing and I asked people to choose an area that, that was measurable. And uh, there was approximately uh, at least 20 people that had a noticeable difference from a discomfort level from six, seven, eight, nine, down to a one, two, three, four, several of them were zeros uh, after a, a three minute blessing. So that's the kind of celebration that was going on yesterday. And I thank Master Shah because without him, I certainly would not be able to offer those uh, those kinds of blessings. Certainly not all at once. A two minute blessing to 30 people all at once and create those kinds of results is pretty remarkable. So I see lots of folks joining us today. Thank you so much for jumping in here. Welcome Ali. Welcome LaRonda. Welcome Sherry Hartree. Uh, welcome Anna Marie. Welcome to Susan Duvin Dorden. Aloha Kristen Strachan. Welcome Robin Toth. And welcome Randy Capistrano. <clears throat> Welcome Richie Souder and Aloha Johnny Mambodi. Welcome Susan Birchmore. Uh, and congratulations on completing your uh, live streams there, Kristen. It is a bit of a learning curve. Welcome Kathy. Welcome Richard Amodio. Aloha Linda Jansen. Welcome Deborah Anderson. Aloha Angela Digiacomo. And welcome CJ. Welcome Marie Ann. Welcome Ialoni. Good morning. Welcome Linda Smith. Aloha Suki Singh. And Aloha Carol Whitney. Welcome Ben. 
Aloha Lisa. <coughs> so thank you all for attending today. Uh, today, as every day, I check guidance as to what to offer the teaching wisdom and blessings on. And today was speak more about the nature of enlightenment and the path. The message was teach more about the path from here to, to there. The what, the whys, and the hows. And what, so the title came out as uh, the layers of enlightenment. Um, there are so many ways that that can be construed. It's, it's, it's uh, because enlightenment, uh, according to our teacher, my teacher, is uh, never-ending. There is a never-ending path on enlightenment. Uh, a lot of us come to this with the perception that, you know, once you reach it, you know, the light bulbs come on, the, the heavenly sounds, oh, and then uh, you're enlightened. Um, but for many people, that's uh, really not the case. And so it's been great to have a, uh, a, a teacher offer some unique and wisdoms that you don't find everywhere else. And so thank you all for joining. I appreciate this opportunity to serve you. So let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul. <clears throat> Placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. Dropping the left hand in front of our heart center. The right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. We close our eyes. We will invite in the beings of light. Dear beloved Mother Earth, dear beloved Father Heaven, all beings of light serving the plan of the light side. Angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints. Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all heaven's animals. We love you, honor you, respect you. We ask you to please be present at this time to assist each and every one of us on our spiritual pathway. Bless us to more fully develop the awarenesses of our soul, our soul's journey, our purpose and intention for being present, and why we're here. Please bless us to more fully awaken to our soul's communication with us so that we don't make as many mistakes on the path. Please bless us to forgive others. Awaken us to the power of forgiveness. Awaken us to why we are here to serve. Do the source soul song of love, peace and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. I love you, honor you, respect you. Thank you. Ask most humbly and most sincerely for your presence. We invite all souls in all universes to please join us at this time. And as we chant this source soul song of love, peace and harmony to connect us heart to heart, soul to soul, let us also remember to chant to serve all souls in all universes. For all those that are new, this is a blessing. So open yourself to receive. Lula I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace and harmony love peace and harmony one more time lula lula li lula lula la li lula lula li lula Lula, li, lula, 
ลลาฮาลิลลาวัวไอวัวเชนฮัลลิงฟูฟูสิ่งนี้วัวไอทรันรันลีวังลีฮิงรงฮัลมูชิร์ชังสังไอพิงอันเฮเซสังไอพิงอันเฮเซ I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How? 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excuse me a moment. Okay. No, I'm not sick, and no, I don't have allergies. Just a random sneeze. But I'm all good now. <coughs> so thank you again all for coming, and thank you for hitting the share button. I appreciate. Uh, That very much. How many people did you tell about your blessing that you received yesterday? The one that took you from a nine down to a two, from a five down to a one, or a zero. The reason you want to share this is not to pump up Master Paul. The reason you want to share this is because people need to know that there are solutions available. There are over 140 teachers. At the level I'm at, who can do what I do, and there's over 8,000 Divine Healing Hands students that have a Divine Healing Hands transmission that can do the same things. All of them have these same attributes uh, and the ability to serve in the same way. So it's more about awakening them to what is soul blessings and how they work. So please uh, share your experience now. As I mentioned yesterday, if it has returned, or an aspect of it has returned, or if it was nine and went down to two, and now it's back to a four, did you go into a depthful forgiveness practice? Did you uh, really go into a deep gratitude for the blessings you received, and then do a deep forgiveness? If you had stomach problems, for example, you ask for forgiveness to all those that you may have harmed, um, uh, causing them abdominal pain. It could have been uh, a lifetime that you or your ancestors maybe poisoned foods, and people had severe abdominal pain. Uh, if you had foot pain, possibly you <coughs> you um, threw out nails on the road uh, uh, because you were being mean, and people stepped on them and hurt their foot. We don't know the source of the whys of the suffering, but we do know that if we have a suffering, it's for a reason. And when I left yesterday. I offered a, a, um, a teaching on the forgiveness practice using uh, the example of this animal in Thailand that was literally on death's door and recovered in, in two weeks, fully recovered because of the power of forgiveness. So, if you've had a, re, uh, a backwarding up of the blessings you received. It's because heaven did not feel that you were grateful for it. Did not feel that you appreciated the virtue that was offered to offset the spiritual debt that was causing the blockage. So, um, you know, as as the 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 one delivering the blessing, I take zero responsibility because I'm not doing it in the first place. I'm just delivering it and and delivering the follow up message to assist you to have the best results. So I give you that. Today, as part of the beginning, as we move into this enlightenment subject matter, so that you can comprehend um, the nature of why these blessings work, why forgiveness works, and how we get to enlightenment. <coughs> so, a little back history. Um, I, even to today, truly don't know uh, what enlightenment is, and it's unlikely that I ever will. Uh, until I'm, you know, one with the Creator in its entirety, then I'll have a full comprehension. And that's the first lesson for everybody. There is no one path, there is no one solution, and it is never-ending. 
Enlightenment is not something that is instantly achieved and you're done. Uh, it is something that is the long haul and it's it's something that occurs the entire time until you are completely melded with the source that created you. And at least according to the wisdom that I've received through my teacher, who I, I believe is an exceedingly enlightened being, um, he states that some of the highest beings, you know, our beloved Jesus, our beloved Kuan Yin, our Buddhas, although they have reached a level of enlightenment that here on earth we call them enlightened, uh, he states that they still have to go through higher layers of enlightenment, that they have quite a bit more growth to go before uh, they reach the, to become one with the, with the original creator. So, uh, and that stands to reason going out that way towards enlightenment because the other part of it is going all the way down that everyone and everything has a soul. The energy and matter before it coagulates into a form, a form of a speck of sand or a rock, the energy and matter uh, has a soul. And then the, the speck of sand has a soul, and everything has a soul. And that soul, from the very beginning, uh, even before creation, all the way to its back to original source, stands to reason that it will go through this constant process of awakening and enlightenment. So, the first major teachings that I received in this area of enlightenment was in 2008, and I attended a soul enlightenment retreat being completely and entirely clueless about what that meant and and definitely having a massive chip on my shoulder about um, that someone could actually offer enlightenment or <coughs> explain it in a way where I'd comprehend it or even give a pathway to it. So when I attended this retreat, uh, the first one with Master Shah, my arms were crossed, my eyebrows, well, at least one of my eyebrows was raised, and I, I brought on, I brought along my, my massive ego that was very confident that it knew quite a bit more than anybody else around me. And, um, and so I was going to compare what this person had to say about, uh, you know, against my very well-rounded knowledge because, you know, I am know-it-all, be-it-all. I have researched everything. Um, it stands to reason that my ego has been crushed substantially since then. And... It's as a result of, of a huge lesson and a huge awakening, which is the minute we think we have the answer, that's the minute we fall off the bus. That's the, that's the moment we lose our spiritual path. The moment we think we definitely got it figured out, that's the moment we definitely don't have it figured out. And that doesn't for just me, that's for all souls. It is the, the awakened mind that recognizes there is always room for another person's perspective. There is always room for higher layers of understanding. And so that is one of the aspects of moving towards enlightenment. Because if you're at a point where you think you've got it all figured out, wrong again. And so... One of the unique things that I learned at this first enlightenment retreat that I went to <clears throat> was that there are layers of enlightenment. And there are three different uh, kinds to simplify it. There is, so, there is soul enlightenment, there is mind enlightenment, and there is body enlightenment. Now I had no idea that there was these different kinds of enlightenments. And I'll go into more detail in a little while. And uh, when this teacher, Master Shah, was on stage talking, he was talking about past lives, and he was talking about light side and dark side, and he was talking about uh, good karma and bad karma, and all these things that I had read about and sort of believed in, but wasn't quite sure of. And what this teacher did was he brought together everything in a very succinct and tangible way. It's kind of like you can have, you know, 42 ingredients for that ultra special dish that requires everything to put together just right and you could have prepared all 42 ingredients but you need to be the master chef to actually mix it together and make that perfect dish and that's what i would say master Shah is he uh came came in with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes of service being a very enlightened being before coming back in to serve humanity again 
and he was uh, given great levels of wisdom that allowed him to take all of these things you and I have ever learned and put it together in a simple way where it can make sense. And one of the things that he said was that these chakras that we have are what's called soul houses. And the reason he referred to them as soul houses is the soul moves through them on its way to enlightenment. And he shares that the soul has a soul standing and that uh, the soul standing is is basically a measurement, a measuring stick that has a direct association to your virtue and your spiritual debt. <clears throat> and he says you're, you're just like a thermometer, it can go up and down. So your soul standing is not going up, 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 up on a consistent basis unless you're one of the very rare, or rare, rare, rare souls that, um, that has figured this stuff out. Uh, and he shares with us that most souls go through life um, making many, many good choices and some bad ones. And then we reincarnate and we have another experience <clears throat> and maybe we make more bad choices than good choices. And so our stock market goes down a little bit. Our soul standing goes down a little bit. And then next to lives, we go very, very good. And then it goes down a little bit. And so we're on this up, down, up, down roller coaster, which is why it takes so long to truly become fully enlightened because it's a constant up, down. One of the reasons it's a constant up down is because our karma, our spiritual debt, inhibits us making constant good choices. And so that's the nature of the human experience to fight forward uh, with awareness and try to move through and past any of the spiritual debt stuff that keeps knocking us in the head. <clears throat> Soul enlightenment, according to this master, is three kinds. There is soul enlightenment, mind enlightenment, and body enlightenment. And soul enlightenment is when the soul reaches the level of the heart center, the message center. How does it reach that level? By many, many, many lifetimes of service. The service uh, needs to be unconditional. And so he brought the wisdom. There are 84,000 ways to reach enlightenment. But one of the pieces of wisdom that he brought is unconditional service brings unlimited virtue. Most of us are focused on service to self. And then slowly over time, we learn to think of and take care of others and do good for others. And when we do, of course, there is great value for us. But truly, it's the unconditional part that makes the difference. So he explained that it takes somewhere between three and 500 lifetimes of good virtue, of people doing good things on a consistent basis. What's an example? <clears throat> His example is if you chanted six hours a day for 60 years to serve others, you chanted to serve others, Namo Renge Kyo, um, you chanted Buddha's name, you chanted Jesus' name, six hours a day, 60 years. That's one lifetime of good service. He said it takes about three to 500 of those, that's not including the down cycles, to have enough virtue to have reached heart enlightenment or soul enlightenment. It's when, you're, it's when your soul rests in your heart center. And you can easily identify those kinds of souls. <clears throat> they are truly unconditional servants. Now, some of them are not quite there yet. They, they understand that. They're doing their best, but they're not quite there yet. One of the uh, uh, trips Master Shah had made was to India. And he was there with Master Francisco, who has a very uh, wide open third eye since he was a child. His third eye is always on. There's no switch. It's just on. <coughs> and he whispered to Master Shah, Master Shah, I'm looking at this guru. I'm looking at all of his students. And none of their souls are enlightened yet. None of their souls are actually sitting in the heart center. And Master Shah whispered back to him, he says, I know, but keep that to yourself because it's disrespectful to say anything, of course. And so even though people are, are on the aspiring path, it still takes a great deal of virtue, a great deal of uh, good karma to create the first level of soul enlightenment. And so everything that we do on this live stream, <clears throat> what are we doing? Forgiveness practice every time. We're doing practices to clear up our spiritual karma, our spiritual debt with other souls. We're doing everything we can to more fully align to why we are here. 
We are chanting love, peace, and harmony, some of us, some of us more than others, to serve others unconditionally. The purpose is to generate uh, unconditionalness, which the natural side effect is uh, good karma. And the natural side effect of that is the soul standing slowly gets raised. So at this retreat in 2008, Master Shaw offered what was called a soul enlightenment order. Well, that was something I had zero clue about, <clears throat> but I was blessed enough to receive it. And in essence, uh, in that retreat, I received enough virtue to instantly move my soul to the center of my chest. Therefore, I had reached the first level of enlightenment. Now, I can tell you, I felt no different whatsoever. I didn't have any uh, experiences that were uh, earth-shaking. I didn't see anything. And, uh, but this was my first experience. So I, I went with it on face value and said, okay, well, the teacher says I received uh, three to 500 lifetimes of virtue. He says that my soul has moved up to my heart center. I'll go with that for now. And that's how I always approached everything if I didn't understand it. I set it aside. So uh, fast forward, later on, Master Shah, uh, this is about a year or two later, he talked about mind enlightenment. This was the first time he introduced it. Heck, I thought I had reached the pinnacle. He said, no, 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 no. Negative mindsets, negative beliefs, your ego attachments. I already mentioned my ego multiple times at the beginning of this. How big? Still, still way too big. Um, there are so many things in the mind that keep us in the, the throes of life. You know, all of the complaining, all of the <clears throat> financial burdens and worries, all of the this, all of the that. The person that is fully enlightened at the mind level has zero worries, zero concerns, is 100% uh, focused on service because they have heart enlightenment. And they know that they are not the provider of their well-being anyway, that the Creator is the one that's going to provide everything for them. But they live that. If anybody here uh, has ever read uh, Yogananda, the Yogananda book, uh, I read it once, so uh, Autobiography of a Yogi. Uh, I remember one of the unique aspects in there, one of the passages, was that the brother challenged Yogananda, Yogananda's brother. And he's always talking about how God provides and on and on and on. And the brother said, fine, if that's so true, give me all your money. Here's the deal. You go over here to this town, I don't know how far away it was, uh, have somebody feed you a meal and come back with money in your pocket. And Yogananda said, okay, but if I do that, what do I get in return? And the brother said, if you do that, I will follow you. I will follow your teachings. And Yogananda said, fine. And he proceeded to describe the story, how he uh, got the free train, train ticket because he had no money. He got the free train ticket and somebody had to go with him to witness all this. So there was two free train tickets. They went to this town while he was in the town. Uh, somebody at the monastery there opened the doors, fed them, and gave them money. They then came back, and it was all validated out. What's the point? The point is, uh, Yogananda was very uh, much closer to mind enlightenment. He had let go of negativity, ego. He, let, he, he was completely in trust, <clears throat> and he trusted from his heart. He had great love for Creator. And Creator instantly provided. He just simply asked, it was done. He had no question about it, not even a little bit. He knew it was going to be taken care of. That's an example of a higher layer of mind enlightenment. Excuse me a minute while I drink some water. So aloha to all those who have joined us in the last few minutes here. Welcome Elizabeth. Welcome Linda Martinez. Welcome Kathleen Monahan, Aloha Jennifer Caress, Aloha Richie Souder, and welcome Pat, welcome Janet, welcome Magdalena, welcome Nikki Davis, and Sandra Kavanaugh. <clears throat> Thank you all again for your attendance. So today's subject is enlightenment, and I will continue. The third level of enlightenment is body enlightenment. And I was, I kind of turned my head like, huh? Body enlightenment? What does that mean? And Master Shah explained. We hear fairy tale stories about souls walking on water like our beloved Jesus, um, people appearing and disappearing, um, 
there's the stories of great masters that can be in one place in Tibet and be another place in Los Angeles in just a, a click of their heels and so forth. And he explains that these are what's called Tao abilities, T-A-O, Tao abilities. And he goes on to explain that Tao abilities are available to those that have reached these various layers of enlightenment. They have purified their heart. They have no doubt. They have purified their thinking. So uh, if they, they believe they're going to be in Los Angeles from Tibet, they're instantly in Los Angeles from Tibet. They, uh, they, on their body level, the body level of enlightenment, he explains, the only way for them to actually accomplish that is if their body becomes a pure light vessel. <clears throat> so there are teachings, uh, and I actually did this for six months, uh, of a dietary process called Bigu, B-I-G-U. You can look it up if you want to. It's an old uh, Taoist way of purifying the body. And it's basically, Bigu translates to no grains. That's the literal translation, no grains. Uh, but it's basically a complete vegan diet. Um, and there's no beans. And so, uh, the second master that I trained under Master Chinyan, the female master who I met in California and then worked with her here in Hawaii, uh, I saw her eat only one apple each day. That was her meal for the entire day, one apple. And I thought her do this for years. Um, she carried very high frequency, very high Shen Qian Jing. Every night at 11, she would go down to the ocean, living here in Hawaii, <clears throat> and she would sit there and meditate for two hours until one o'clock. And she was absorbing the yin energy from the moon. The yang energy is the sun, the yin energy is the moon. And the yin energy is the nurturing energy that we don't have near enough of. That would bring balance to the yin yang nature. And so the body enlightenment occurs when our body becomes uh, less and less dense, higher and higher frequency. Uh, and it just takes many, 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 many lifetimes. It's exceedingly hard to accomplish. Uh, the thing that I have come to understand, and I speak of this through understanding, I know this is going to hit your forehead and fall on the floor uh, with, with very little belief, but I just tell you this anyway, so that it starts the seed growing. The thing that I appreciate about Master Shah is he has been given the authority to, tr to literally change our bodies, to, to bring higher frequencies from outside of Earth, uh, you know, the heavenly realms, if you will, and transform our physical vehicle. And he explained even just recently, he was offering blessings for a variety of the organs and systems. And for the first time I had seen, he offered one for bones and bone marrow. And I was, I was kind of like, wow, that's not a very common to the to the master teacher specifically his top teachers he said all of you should be getting this one for the bones and then he went on to explain because the bones are the hardest part of the human body to to turn into light they're very very difficult and the the, the shen chi jing blessings that come with this is a much higher frequency than your human body shen chi jing it has the highest possibility of turning your bones to light eventually you got to do more work he said, but it will save you, you know, thousands of lifetimes. And so that's the nature of this teacher. He's, he's helping us to develop layers of enlightenment as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so uh, last week, I t and I'm going to tie this into enlightenment. Last week I talked about yin and yang. I don't know how many of you were enjoying that or watching that live stream. But in that, I spoke of the nothingness from which everything is created from. The, uh, uh, the nothingness is, has different terminology. Master Shah refers to it as the hundun, the, um, the empty space that looks like a fog. And that's where all the energy and matter is that has not coagulated into an actual condensed form yet. And he explains that the Tao uh, is a word that is used for this empty space. The Tao is, is the source from which all things are created. And human, and human beings and uh, are a, uh, a child of heaven and mother earth. So heaven is not um, uh, ultimate creator, so to speak. Heaven and earth are mother and father. <clears throat> they were created from the allness 
uh, and they have form, heaven has form, earth has form. All things that have form are within the yin-yang world. Very important to understand. And although the form in heaven is a different frequency than you and I, for example, a child can see angels. Some adults can see angels, and some children can see angels. But if a child tells you they see an angel, you, you need to believe it. Uh, how can that child see the angel and you cannot? Because the child's frequency has not been so polluted that they're, quote, dumbed down to where they can't see that frequency. Uh, an angel's frequency is a finer frequency than a human body frequency. A cell phone frequency is certainly not an angel, can't see it, but it goes through walls, it goes through everything, it's what's making this live stream work. Does it mean it's not real just because you can't see it? Well, that's kind of foolish. Of course it's real. You know it's real. It's working right now. So why do we poo-poo on some of these other things that we can't see? Because mind says attitudes and beliefs, lack of enlightenment. So uh, children see angels because their frequency is still pure enough to where they can see these higher frequencies. So heaven is higher layers of frequency, but they still have form, so to speak. The hundun, the Tao from which all things are created, is you can't see it. There's, there's nothing there to see. And so my teacher, Master Shah, describes the Tao, that which creates all things, created heaven and earth. And heaven and earth include the yin and yang world. <clears throat> and the yin and yang world uh, has to be in balance on an individual basis and on a collective basis before we all return back to the source. And so a, a person who is enlightened, uh, going backwards 15 minutes now, I spoke about, is it possible for someone to disappear in Tibet and reappear in LA? Very hard for the mind to comprehend. I can only assume it's possible based on the wisdom I've learned so far. I certainly haven't seen it, cannot validate it for you. But based on the wisdom I've learned, I do believe it's possible. And the reason I believe it's possible is very simple. Everything has higher and higher layers of frequencies. Just because we can't believe, just because we can't see the angel doesn't mean we don't believe it. Just because we can't see Jesus doesn't mean we don't believe in Jesus. Just because we can't see God doesn't mean we don't believe in God. And the same goes for just because we can't believe, can't see somebody disappear here and reappear here doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means we don't yet comprehend how it's possible. All humanity is on that path. There are enlightened beings that have reached that level of purity where they can disappear and reappear. And the path from here to there is what I want to share with you. It starts with everything we've been doing this last year on this live stream. It starts with clearing our karma. It starts with self-responsibility. How many of you have taken self-responsibility? I bet if I pulled the 30 that are watching this live and the 500 to 1,000 that will watch this later, that only 50% have taken responsibility for all of the good, all of the bad in their life. I would say 90% took responsibility for the good, but maybe only 20% take responsibility for the bad. We must recognize that we are uh, a product of our soul. We are a soul having a physical experience. And our physical experience is not your name and your ego. It is what we're in now at this moment. And all of the good and all of the bad is as a result of all of our lifetimes of experiences. So the way to enlightenment starts with what we've been doing this last year, self-clearing the spiritual debt through awakening. And the beginning of that, the beginning of that is self-responsibility. The moment we step into self-responsibility for all things good, all things not so good. It's not easy to step in and you know, have a car accident, you know. How do you take responsibility for that? The, the, the jerk behind you that was a drunk driver ran into you. How could this possibly be your responsibility? Okay. You have to see things from that bigger picture. Nothing happens by accident. Everything is orchestrated by your soul, your heaven's team, and heaven to bring about conditions that we learn. The next step is to see that everything that happens is an opportunity. So the path to enlightenment is not easy. That's been stated by every enlightened being before us. I am so far from there, I can't, can't possibly fathom how far I am from there. But I just keep trudging along as best as I can, and part of it is serving you unconditionally. As I serve you with this wisdom unconditionally, aspects of your soul journey will be enhanced. Your soul will reward my soul and offer me virtue because I've rewarded, I've given your soul wisdom. And that virtue will assist me to elevate. That virtue will assist me 
to, to raise my frequency. I don't do it to receive your virtue. I do it as an unconditional service because that's what my teacher taught me. So I thank my teacher and I bow my head to him for his, uh, his, um, his presence and his uh, uh, unselfish willingness to share this wisdom to awaken as many souls as possible. First step, awakening and responsibility. Second step, seeing everything as an opportunity. Third step, after we see it as an opportunity, reconfigure it to where it's not a negative as much as possible. I know I'm not enjoying this experience, but I also recognize that somewhere along the line, I or my ancestors have brought this unpleasantness to me. And accordingly, um, I need to do something about it. And since I know I'm responsible, I'm going to do what? Forgiveness practice. When we forgive, what does that do to your spiritual debt? Starts to release it. If you're releasing your spiritual debt, what happens to your soul standing? It starts to increase. You're moving more towards enlightenment. You see the steps? These wisdoms, these teachings are not um, fly-by-night stuff, guys. It, it, you know, a hundred years from now, this teacher and his wisdom will be very, very, very well recognized. Today, some people wake up to it. Some people ignore it. Some people are very stuck in their blockages. They're, they're not ready to, to move towards enlightenment yet. Everybody's at their own levels. But you are one of the few that has the great opportunity to apply these wisdoms now in your life. What is the immediate result? Positioning yourself to level up as we collectively move into a new, uh, a new dimension, if you will. You'd have to be sleeping underneath a rock if you didn't hear that we're moving into higher layers of love, a new dimension as a whole. There's been all kinds of different names for it. Fourth dimension, all kinds of different stuff. I've heard fourth dimension. That's what I tend to call it. But in essence, we are collectively as a race, as an earth, and as a uh, galaxy moving into a new section of the universe. And that new section of the universe, this, by the way, is documented scientifically. Do your homework. Go to the SETI sites. Go to the NASA sites. Go to the deep uh, astrological sites. And you will discover what I'm telling you is astrologically accurate. The density of the space that we're moving into is impacting Earth. It's impacting our sun. It's impacting human beings because we are energetic vehicles. And so the path to enlightenment, especially now in our life, is exceedingly important. It is so important. It is life-saving important. Because as we move into this higher density field, as the entirety of humanity is surrounded by more and more light and love, which is what this field carries, then the darkness has to come up to be purified. Uh, we talked a bit about that yesterday. And if we have these tools of enlightenment that Master Shah has brought to us, awakening, responsibility, seeing everything good or bad as an opportunity, applying love and forgiveness to it, we can then be in a position to where the bombardment of these, um, these incoming frequencies do not bring us suffering. Uh, this week, there has been a multiple of people contacting me that have had significant mind blockages and, and very uh, uh, wild emotional blockages uh, come to the surface. Uh, they're stuck. They're in a place in their mind. They don't know how to move forward. Um, they're, they're looping. Um, they're, and why? Because they're not doing what this conversation is about right now. They're not consciously seeing it as an opportunity. They're not taking responsibility for their position. They're not uh, doing forgiveness practice around the sufferings that they're going through. And then they're not bringing positivity to it as the last step. Positivity meaning uh, something of love and light, chanting love, peace and harmony, chanting anything that represents love and light. And so we have to transform it as it comes at us because it will keep coming at us. Enlightenment is the process of awakening. Awakening is not sticking your head back in the ground and complaining and ignoring and not doing anything about it or staying in a place of circling even though you hear this wisdom and you say, okay, and you forget about it in one hour. That is not enlightenment. That is not awakening. That is the opposite of it. But I don't say that derogatorily or in a mean way. 
<coughs> I say that as another point of awakening. Why does it happen? We forget one hour later and we fall back into the old drudgery of things. <coughs> we go home after the job. Maybe you're listening to me driving or whatever it might be. Why does it happen that we go back into the old patterns? Karma. Very simple. It is the nature of our spiritual debts that we have harmed others from awakening. We have harmed others from uh, having a clear mind. We have possibly taught others negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, ego and attachments. And if we have taught those things, then those things come back to remind us to give us opportunities. So enlightenment is a process of awakening to the higher possibilities that are available to you. The reason uh, it's so important to receive blessings from Master Shah, from the 140 master teachers, I'm blessed to be one of them, from any of the Divine Healing Hands healers, soul healer teachers, any of the calligraphy healers that are out there, the reason it's important to receive any blessings at any time for any condition, mental conditions, emotional conditions, physical pain, headaches, migraines, it doesn't matter what the malady is, relationships, finances, is very simple. All of those that I've mentioned have a unique ability to offset the spiritual debt that has brought the suffering to you. That's why yesterday when I offered the blessing, 30 or so people on the line, about 20 commented there was a 50 to 80%, some, some of them 100% reduction of their suffering. Instantaneously, from one three-minute blessing, I was a minimum of 2,000 miles away from everybody, and yet it impacted everybody equally. Did I do that? No, I can't do that. I am not capable of doing that. But my teacher and his connection to source is capable of doing that. That's the kind of power. How did it happen so instantly that your nine goes down to a two, that your 10 foot pain goes down to a zero? I saw those yesterday. I'm just repeating what I saw. How is that possible? Wrap your brain around this, guys. It's possible because virtue is offered. Virtue offsets the debt that was causing the pain. Do you think it's different for your emotions? Do you think it's different for your mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs? Do you think it's different for your finances, relationships? No. The same root cause, spiritual debt karma, causes those problems in those areas. So get it from me, get it from anybody, but find a healer that has these kinds of attributes that we've been blessed to receive from this teacher so that you can clear as much of these blockages as possible while these souls are present on earth to serve you because it is the fastest way to <clears throat> to clear your stuff if you had a, 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 a sidewalk outside your driveway outside and it had greasy slimy oil all over it would you prefer a garden hose or a fire hose to rinse it off think about it the value of attend of receiving blessings from master shah or any of, of his healers that have received these kinds of abilities is a fire hose it's washing it away this stuff hundreds and hundreds of years faster than you can do on your own so the path to enlightenment is slow or fast always according to you and uh, the beginning of it is of course the responsibility and so <clears throat> Master Shah has placed in his books things to assist you. This is one of his most recent books called Soul Over Matter. This one is about money. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And it was co-written with Adam Markell, who is a money guru. And, but this money guru is, is very much mind over matter oriented. His entire uh, structure, he has hundreds, hundreds of thousands of students that pay him $10,000 a whack to sit down in front of him for a weekend and he gives them a, a, a lot of information about how they can be wealthy and in his own words he said even though I give them everything they need only 1% succeed and he could never understand why and Master Shah taught him that's why they co-wrote a book he, Master Shah taught him he said the reason why is because of their soul blockages doesn't matter how much effort they put into it if they have financial karma they're not going to be able to go forward so they co-wrote a book called soul over matter which is a level above mind over matter and if you don't have it, you should get it. And if you have it, you should reread it. But this here is an example. Uh, this calligraphy is an example of one of the tools that self-clears your karma. 
<clears throat> one of the tools that lifts you higher in your enlightenment journey. One of the tools that will help you remove your physical pain. Now, even though this calligraphy, which is called The Greatest Love, is in a financial book, you can use it to offset physical pain. You can use it to offset relationship blockages. Why? Because when he created this and he empowered it to help clear some of your karma by practicing with it, he teaches you how to practice. When he created it and empowered it to serve you, he didn't put a limitation that it was only there to bless your finances. The blessings that are in there are surely to assist humanity to offset their spiritual death. So it is truly remarkable that we, uh, as a human race, have had so many tools available to us. I haven't read or heard anywhere in any of the documentation, the scriptures, or anywhere along the line <coughs> of the previous beings of light that have come who have also brought and left behind tools that clear our karma. I haven't heard about that. And so that's why this is such a unique opportunity today. Okay, let me offer uh, some wisdom from whoever wants to talk, heaven, I guess, on enlightenment. Let's see if there's additional information that I haven't spoken from what my experiences and understanding of Master Shah's teaching have been. <clears throat> How? It is my honor to share with each of you today some deeper wisdoms on the nature and the purpose of enlightenment. It has been spoken that there are soul, mind, and body enlightenment. There is a further enlightenment that is unspoken of. It is a heaven's enlightenment. In heaven there are countless layers. And each of those souls who go into heaven go to various layers of heaven depending upon their awareness, their karma, and their service. So even those in the heavenly layers have layers of enlightenment to achieve. How do they achieve this? They achieve this also the same way as you do on earth, through service. They achieve this by coming when souls like yourself call and ask for assistance from heavenly beings. This then puts merit in their accounts and assists them on their journey. They also incarnate into this and other worlds as an enlightened being to serve further. It is these enlightenments that those beings that are already what you would call enlightened serve even far greater. They incarnate and go through the process of remembering who they are and then level up more. They serve substantially from the earth plane, thereby generating the greatest amount of virtue possible. It is one of the fastest ways to move to the highest densities of heaven. Enlightenment is not a path so much as it is a process. It can, as has been told, happen instantaneously. It is relatively rare and on the almost impossible side, but it is certainly possible. The opportunities for you and all souls to reach enlightenment is greater than ever before at this time on earth because of the frequency shifts that are occurring, as has been spoken about, as well as the beings of light who have come to earth to serve human beings. It is of greatest importance that you move away from your limiting activities, your mindless activities, and move towards mindfulness move towards joyfulness. Step away from negativity, wherever it comes from, including your own self. Choose on a conscious basis happiness. 
And when you find yourself in a place where it seems so difficult to achieve, stay in a place of forgiveness specific to the area you are suffering in. If you are in depression, ask most sincerely for bringing any depression upon any soul in any time, regardless of what had transpired. Offer your deepest and most sincere forgiveness. You will find that a consistency of this can offset any unpleasant place you find yourself in, and then you can move more readily and easily back into happiness. Your last moments, whatever they are, are the most important moments. This is an enlightenment teaching. There is a teaching that Master Shah shares that there was a well-known uh, disciple that was on the very advanced Buddha path. And at his last minute before departure had doubts and it was in those last minutes that the entirety of his life had been in essence nullified what was his lesson his lesson was to recognize that heaven is always watching and if heaven is always watching then it is most important to be conscious in all time including the last few minutes of your life. If the last few minutes of your life are slow, you have opportunity to attune to heaven. If the last few minutes of your life are very fast and unexpected, this is why you should always strive to maintain happiness and joy and release the spiritual debts. And this is how you avoid being what is called a ghost on this plane for it is those that were in a middle place of of not knowing what happened and did not take responsibility for their life did not see their interconnectivity to all things that have found themselves a bit lost they will of course find their way eventually enlightenment is the constancy of aligning to source I love you. I am honored to share this wisdom with you. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> okay. So, thank you everybody for uh, your patience in this explanation. And, and I hope you receive some value from that guidance. And welcome, Isabel. So I will finish today by offering a blessing to everybody. I'm checking as to what to offer. Okay. <clears throat> so this blessing will be for releasing mindsets and negativity that keeps you from staying on the positive, right, spiritual path. And of course, it will be as appropriate. Close your eyes, sit up straight, bring your back away from the back of the chair. I will ask not only my healing treasure, but the countless blessings in the Da I calligraphy, the most recent calligraphy Master Shah created, to assist all of you. So, dear the countless blessings in Da I calligraphy love you respect you please come out subdivide to all of those watching all of those listening offer the blessing for this request that i have made to assist them with their soul journey release negativity move towards positivity and maintain their spiritual mindsets that are beneficial to them as appropriate blessing start he uh, he oh, yeah, he uh, he uh, he oh. 
आहे 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 आयो आहे आयो हे आहे ओ आहे आहे आयो हे आयो हे आया हे आयो हे आयो हे Thank you all so very much for this opportunity to serve you. If you'd like to know more about who is Master Shah, go to drsha.com, like drsha.com. Uh, you can also find more on my page, asoulhealer.com. And you can message me through Facebook or my email, asoulhealer at yahoo.com. I look forward to serving you. Let me know if there's any services that I can do to assist you with releasing any form of pain you're having in your life. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>